in this episode, I'm gonna talk a little bit about foils. So this is all you need to know about foils. I've done kite foiling. foiling Pump foiling. You can check the videos out below. Just got all my foils out of the bags, giving them a little bit of maintenance, checking them to make sure they're all ready for when we're allowed back on the water. But I'm just gonna talk to you today a little bit about what foils are good for what discipline and the aspects of different foil setups that create change within your riding, whether that's for better pumping, for better steering, for more stability or speed, there's all sorts of things you can do in your setup in order to influence this. So right now, I'm just gonna talk you through about my foil setup, all of the foils that I have. Body. Bodies is fine, but I like my mind and my soul So if I ever get body, this is my body I'm still somebody you know Took me some time just to grow Now I slow the daughters in these flows Breaking down borders so they know No place I can't take it or I will not go I'm on the road, lessons multiply Getting close to God, I'm on G.O. D was depressing, just fucking these hoes I learned my lessons and started to blow Leaving these sessions all up in smoke Had to reach my peak This is something that's taken quite a bit of time for me to get used to and also to learn as I've been going along. You've got wingspan, which affects your lift. You've got depth. If it's a very thin wing, it would be called high aspect. If it's a very fat wing like this one, it would be called low aspect. Aspect ratio and wingspan affects the speed and turning performance of the wing respectively. The rear wing creates stability for the front wing. The bigger the back wing, the typically more stable the foil will be with a slightly more forgiving lift and a slower trim profile. The smaller the back wing, the faster the turn will be, the quicker it will be to trim. I think the next thing to cover is the fuselages. A short fuselage will create much faster up and down performance of your foil, and this really affects pumping. So the ability to pump back out to waves or pump off a wall or you know however you use your foil to pump, the shorter the fuselage, the quicker the frequency of the pump will be. So this is a long fuselage, which I typically use with the bigger wings, but that's a much slower pump and up and down trim. So if you're looking for a bit more stability within your foil, you might wanna try a longer fuselage. The next thing we have are the masts, and the masts affect the foils in different ways. You've got the length of the mast. This is a short mast at 750. This is a long mast at 900. The height or length of the mast dictates how much vertical movement you have. This can affect your pumping ability, how quickly it breaches, or how quickly the board touches the water. The longer your mast, 
the more radical a turn you will be able to do without the foil coming out of the water. That said, if you're a beginner, a shorter mast makes it a lot easier to recover from a breach or to just get a feeling for the foil in general. These two masts are also different widths and this width is called the cord. And the cord distance, the distance from the front of the mast to the back of the mast, affects your side to side turning. The longer your cord distance, the slower your turning from side to side and generally the more stable your ride will be. And the thinner the cord distance, it will be much more twitchy through the water, generally more maneuverable. So a thin cord profile is typically for more advanced riders. Okay, so I think that is sufficiently complex and we have covered most of the things that affect a foil's performance on the water. Let's start with this bad boy. Now, this is the Fanatic 2000 wing, and this is my biggest foil wing setup. This I would use typically for wing foiling or paddle surf foiling when the waves are quite small. It's perfect for my weight at slow speeds. I'm about 90 kgs, and a 2000 wing really helped me to get into paddle surf foiling on smaller waves, needing a little less accuracy, and also for SUP foiling or anything where you've got quite a lot of weight to lift, this wing will do the lifting for you. With this back wing, which is the 365 back wing, which I think is the, the larger back wing, giving you very stable lift platform. With the longer fuselage, you really get front to back stability. Gives the rider a little bit more time to react to changes under the water. So this is my second largest foil. To be quite honest, I would say this is the most versatile wing that I have. Now this is a 1250 Duotone full carbon spirit foil. You can surf it and you can kite it and you can pump it. So it does a little bit of everything pretty well. I've been really impressed with surf foiling this foil. It's incredibly maneuverable, can handle speed in a straight line very well, and it can turn really well. So it kind of marked the foil of the moment for me, this one. And I'm using that with the standard 215 rear wing in combination with the 70 cm fuselage and this is working really well for paddle surfing and slow light wind kite foiling. So that is a really good setup if you're considering a single foil setup for almost every use. It might be a little bit more advanced in the waves but once you get into it that becomes a really good thing. So the next one down in my size range is the non-full carbon sort of composite carbon um, spirit range foil. This is the 700 wing. This wing is the foil that I actually kite surf around the Isle of Wight with. So it's a great stable but quite fast foil for kite surfing. I would say maybe too small for surfing, probably definitely too small for surfing, but if you were towing into some big waves this might be the one. This combination is incredibly stable and easy to use over a long distance. Okay, so finally my smallest wing setup is the Duotone GT. It is an incredibly high performance foil setup. Um, it's got a very short cord length, so it's very fast through the water. And that is used with the 200 rear wing. Um, and this setup is my high performance speed kite setup. It's quite intensive to ride. It's not as relaxing as the 700 wing. The 700 wing you can really just sit and cruise. Whereas this is a really high performance machine that goes incredibly fast but requires a constant input from the rider to keep it balanced. So that is a full breakdown of all the gear that I have for foiling at the moment. It's a journey to get into foiling and it's something that's really pleasurable and I am looking very much forward to getting back to after we are all let out of this lockdown. Any questions, ask them in the comments below. Really appreciate a subscribe to my channel and see you on the water as soon as this lockdown is over. Boom.